On today's episode, we're out here in Georgia taking a look at the all-new 2017 Nissan Rogue Hybrid. This is only one of two compact crossover hybrids sold in America at the moment. For 2017, Nissan sent the Rogue in for cosmetic surgery, and we have an all-new front end, an all-new back end, and a revised dashboard and interior. If you want to know more about the non-hybrid Rogue, then there is a separate video on that. This video is going to focus primarily on the hybrid version that we're taking a look at here. The all-new 2017 front end gives us much more aggressive headlamps and an overall theme that's tied in a little bit better with Nissan's truck family. We have this sort of U-shaped chrome grille right here that they call their V-motion grille, even though it is shaped more like a U. And then we have this black section that mirrors that shape right below it. We have a tasteful amount of chrome right below that, better integrated fog lamps, as we move from bottom end trims to the top end trim, we get LED headlamps and we also get radar adaptive cruise control. You'll find a sensor right behind that logo. One of the things that has definitely not changed with this generation of the Rogue is the size. At 184.5 inches long, this is one of the longest entries in this segment. This is a full five inches longer than a Honda CRV. Unlike some entries that get larger without actually enlarging the interior, the Rogue is also one of the largest inside in this segment and it really shows right back here because the Rogue is the only entry in this segment with an optional third row. Of course, we're driving the hybrid model and the hybrid model cannot have the third row because the battery is going where that third row would normally sit. But we still have the overall shape and the overall size of the Rogue that was designed to accommodate that third row. That means we have a very upright rear end that's much more practical for cargo and a very large cargo area. The rear end has also been tweaked for 2017. We get new LED tail lamp modules, and the overall shape and style mirrors what we see in the headlamps to help tie the car together a little bit better. You'll find the release for the rear hatch right down here below the license plate, not above the license plate. And we have a small tasteful amount of chrome right over here as well. The biggest difference between the Rogue and the Rogue Hybrid is of course right here under the hood because this is where we find the hybrid system. Instead of the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine we find in the regular Rogue, we get a two liter four cylinder engine that produces 141 horsepower. The engine is then augmented by an electric motor that produces 40 horsepower and 118 pound feet of torque. The two combine together to give you 176 total horsepower and an undisclosed amount of torque, which I'm gonna estimate right around 200. Although total system output is six horsepower higher than the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, overall performance is quite similar because we have some extra weight because of the electric motor and of course the battery pack in the rear. Thanks to the hybrid system, fuel economy goes from 29 miles per gallon in the front wheel drive regular Rogue to 34 miles per gallon in the front wheel drive hybrid Rogue. As with the regular Rogue, a mechanical all wheel drive system is available and that will remove one mile per gallon from your combined score. Before we move on, we should talk about all-wheel drive systems because the all-wheel drive system in the Rogue is very, very different than what we see in the RAV4 Hybrid. The Toyota RAV4 Hybrid uses an electric all-wheel drive system. And what they mean by that is we have a hybrid system up front. It's the same as you find in front-wheel drive Toyota hybrids. And then in the back, they put an electric motor. The electric motor in the rear of the hybrid RAV4 is rated for about 80 horsepower, whereas the drivetrain up front is rated for about 200 horsepower. You can see the problem here. The vehicle can't send more than 80 horsepower to the rear under any circumstances. The hybrid all-wheel drive system in the Rogue is very different because this uses a true mechanical all-wheel drive system. That means 176 system horsepower in theory with a completely locked center coupling and zero traction up front could go right back there to the rear wheels. Of course, the systems will never send 100% of the power to the rear, but this system will feel much more like a traditional all-wheel drive system and exactly like a regular gasoline Rogue, whereas over there on the RAV4 side, the RAV4 EV is much less capable than the regular RAV4 on slippery surfaces. Because few people take their compact crossovers truly off-road, the real-world driving application for this is snow. If you're in heavy snow, the Rogue is going to feel much more stable, much more sure-footed, and much more natural than the RAV4 hybrid. The major difference between the hybrid system that we find under the Rogue's hood and the hybrid system that we find under the hood of the old Nissan Pathfinder hybrid is that this system now has an electric air conditioning compressor, and that's a major difference. One of the complaints about the system in the Nissan Pathfinder was that in hotter climates, the engine would rarely turn off, and that really wasn't saving you that much fuel, especially at stoplights, stop signs, or at low speeds. The Rogue is completely different. This will actually shut off its engine at low speeds, high speeds, up to 75 miles an hour, or even drive along in EV mode 
for up to two miles at 25 miles an hour. Now you can't control this hybrid system quite like you can the other hybrids out there. There's no EV mode button, so you can't force the system into EV operation. You just have to trust the engine and the computer to do whatever it thinks is most efficient. Nissan has also not touched the front seat design, and for the Rogue, that's actually a very good thing because these are some of the most comfortable seats in this segment. Now they're not quite as adjustable as some of the seats in this segment, so we only have two-way adjustable lumbar support in this top end trim, not four-way adjustable lumbar support. We, however, still have a tilt telescopic steering column with a moderate range of motion, and the overall design of these seats is excellent for my six-foot frame. Thanks to the generous size of the Rogue, these rear seats easily get 10 out of 10 points. The seat bottom cushions are a little bit higher off the ground than the average entry in this particular segment, even though I still have about two inches of headroom left. And we are in the model with the panoramic sunroof, and that does cut down on rear headroom. If I move over to the middle seat, I have a little bit less headroom, but my hair is not brushing the ceiling. I still have about half an inch left there, and this middle seat is a decent amount higher off the ground than the outboard seating positions. Moving all the way over to the right side of the vehicle, this front seat is all the way back in its tracks. I still have about an inch and a half of legroom left. The reason for that is that the Rogue has some of the highest combined legroom figures in this particular segment. Nissan in general does very well in legroom scores, but this Rogue is exceptional for this category. Rear seat passengers get a softly padded center armrest, and another nice touch back here is that we have a seat belt for the center seat position that comes out of the seat back itself not out of the ceiling. That means it's easier not only to fold this seat back without having to detach that seat belt and tuck it back up somewhere, but it also means if you put a child seat in that center position, it's gonna be a little bit more centered in the seat itself. Every hybrid has a battery and the battery has to go somewhere, and that somewhere would be right back here in the cargo area. When we lift this hatch, You'll notice that cargo area has dropped from the regular Rogue's 32 cubic feet down to 27.3 cubic feet. Under this section of the load floor, we find a little bit of extra cargo space, and unlike some hybrids out of the market, we actually have a spare tire. If you lift this cargo divider out of the back, we find a compact spare tire and the subwoofer for the audio system. This is possible because if you look closely, this is the hybrid battery right here between the spare tire and the cargo well. That's how they were able to package everything in this cargo area. As we take a look around the interior, keep in mind that we are in the top end hybrid trim. So we do have this large panoramic moonroof that goes just about over half of the rear seats. Doesn't go quite to the rear passenger's heads. Up front, we have two-way adjustable headrests and height adjustable front seat belts. And because we are in the top end model, we of course have leather upholstery. It's perforated, but not ventilated in this model. The front doors use a combination of soft touch injection molded plastics like we find right up here on the top of the door and then hard touch plastics in most of the tan area that you see in the rest of the door design, except for the armrest itself, which is a soft touch material as well. The overall design of the dashboard is similar to the 2016 model year Rogue, although we do get more premium touches inside. We have a soft touch injection molded upper portion of the dashboard, and then this is actually a stitched piece of pleather that matches the seat upholstery. You will find hard touch plastics lower in the dashboard, just like most of the entries in this segment. And then we have a very large glove compartment right there below. It is a bin style glove compartment. I had no problem fitting a tablet computer inside. Because we're in the top end trim, we have a Bose center channel speaker right here, just above these two large air vents and the hazard light button. Then below that, we find the available infotainment and navigation system. This system is similar to what we see in the Nissan Sentra and a variety of other Nissan products. We have navigation built right into the system. We also have access to our 360 degree camera that's available in the Nissan Rogue. You can see we have front cameras, side cameras, and a rear camera as well. There's also a limited amount of app integration. If we hit that app button right over there, you'll see that we have Nissan Connect services, which are cellular delivered. We also have travel link services, which are XM delivered. And of course we have smartphone connected apps like Facebook, online search, etc. Below the infotainment system, we find the controls for our optional dual zone climate control. Below that we have a storage cubby that is not closable. USB input, auxiliary input, and a 12 volt power outlet. The shifter is a Cobra head style design in the console. There's actually a button right here under the front. And then we move it over to the left for the manual mode. We press up for up and down for down. The manual mode is a little bit interesting because of course this does use a traditional CVT, not an eCVT like we see in the Toyota hybrid SUVs. Between the front seats, we have two large cup holders. This is also where you'll find the controls for the heated seats, high and low. And then we have a small storage cubby where you can put phones. This is an iPhone 7 Plus and it does fit in there quite nicely. Although you would have to have the cord dangling from here all the way up there to that USB jack if you wanted to charge it. Behind that, we have a redesigned padded center armrest with some interesting stitching going on right here. This opens to reveal a moderately sized storage cubby where you can very easily put smartphones. There's actually a small slot right there that could be used for smaller phones, or you can just dump them right there in the bin. 
The instrument cluster in the hybrid model is a little bit different than the gasoline only model because we get a power gauge right over here on the left side. You'll notice, however, we still have a traditional tachometer, not a power gauge like we see in some of the other hybrids on the market. Between the speedometer and the tachometer, we get a multifunction display that gives us things like our energy flow diagram right there. You'll notice that the engine just turned off because, again, we do have an electric air conditioning compressor in this model. You'll see the coolant temperature in this display because they've taken that gauge out of the tachometer, fuel economy, navigation directions, etc. This is also where you'd be able to see the operation of Nissan's safety shield systems, and you'd also be able to change certain vehicle settings right here through this interface. One of the biggest interior changes is this all-new three-spoke flat-bottom steering wheel. It's very reminiscent of certain European vehicles. We have sport grips right up top and, of course, those flat grips right down there below. On the left side of the steering wheel, we find the buttons for the infotainment system, volume up, down, track forward, backward, and then these buttons control that multifunction display right there between the speedometer and the tachometer. The buttons can be used to change between screens or change options within one of those screens. For instance, we can change our meter selection right there. We have a back button. And then over here on the right side of the steering wheel, we have the buttons for our cruise control system, engage, disengage, dedicated phone hang up and pickup buttons, and a voice command button. To the left of the steering wheel, we have a variety of different buttons. We have an eco mode button, sport button, all wheel drive lock button. This is actually quite unique in the hybrid model because it still has a mechanical all wheel drive system. But you'll notice that none of these buttons are an EV mode button because there simply isn't one offered in this vehicle. As I usually say with first drive reviews like this, keep in mind that these scores are preliminary because we have not tested this vehicle on our own home test track. We're testing it out here in Georgia. It's considerably more humid, considerably hotter, and the terrain is a little bit different. That said, however, we scored the same 8.5 seconds 0 to 60 that we got in the last Rogue that we tested. It's kind of sensible because the power output figures of this Rogue are essentially the same as the regular Rogue. And even though we probably get a little bit more torque out of this hybrid system, and the torque curve is probably a little bit more advantageous, we have a little bit of extra weight because of that hybrid system and the hybrid battery pack in the rear. Thankfully, the hybrid system does not really appear to add that much weight to the Rogue, so it doesn't really seem to affect the way the Rogue handles or the way that it brakes. We still stop from 60 miles an hour to zero in 125 feet, which is approximately the same as the last Rogue we tested again. Although not strictly part of the drive section, one of the things you'll notice right away is this new steering wheel. It's an awful lot more comfortable, definitely an awful lot more elegant and sporty looking than the last generation Rogue steering wheel. This reminds me an awful lot of Audi's steering wheel designs. The relatively light curb weight of the Rogue really helps out the handling score both for the regular Rogue and for the Rogue Hybrid. The gasoline only Rogue score is a B in this segment, but I'm actually going to give this Rogue Hybrid an A when it comes to hybrid scores, because I think this is actually a little bit more pleasing to drive than the RAV4. We get a little bit better steering feel, and overall the handling just feels a little bit better polished than we find in the RAV4. A compliant ride has long been a Rogue selling point, and although this does not feel boaty, this definitely has one of the softer suspensions in this segment. The suspension soaks up both large and small bumps better than most of the compact entries in this segment, and that means this is a better choice for long highway rides than some of these sportier entries like a Mazda CX-5. You're definitely going to feel more of the road imperfections in a suspension like that. One of the big changes to all Rogue models for 2017 has been an increase in the amount of sound isolation found in the dashboard, the doors, etc. That has reduced our cabin noise score from about 72 decibels down to 70 and a half decibels, which makes this one of the quieter cars in this segment. Although we still have a little bit more wind noise than some of the competition, we definitely get less road noise than we had before. In terms of overall road noise, this is very comparable to both the RAV4 Hybrid and most versions of the Honda CRV. Fuel economy is, of course, what hybrids are all about. And we've been averaging between 30 and a half and 35 miles per gallon in this Rogue over very mixed driving. We have been zero to 60 testing it out here in Georgia, and we've been driving it on a lot of winding country highway with an awful lot of rolling hills. That fuel economy score is very comparable to the RAV4 Hybrid. Although it does seem that the RAV4 Hybrid will get slightly better fuel economy in stop and go traffic like on freeways. The reason is that this hybrid system seems to be a little more reluctant to use just the electric motor in those low speed situations than the RAV4. The RAV4 will wait a little bit longer to kick in the gasoline engine and I think it has a slightly larger battery pack, although neither Nissan nor Toyota have released complete detailed specifications on their battery packs. In most situations, this hybrid system is just as smooth or smoother than the system that we find in the RAV4 in terms of transitions between EV and hybrid mode or gasoline-only engine power mode. Because the Rogue uses a traditional CVT, this will feel more like the regular Rogue, and this CVT also imitates shift points. So if you floor the car, for instance, we get imitation shift points once we hit around 6,000 RPM. You can hear it there. And you don't find that in the RAV4. The RAV4 drives very much like a Prius. 
The other thing that impressed me about this hybrid system is the braking feel. In most of Toyota's hybrids, if you apply the brakes gently and then you move from a gentle brake application to a full brake application, there's a moment where it feels like the car isn't doing anything. That's something that seems to be very unique to the Toyota hybrids. We don't really get that same feel in most of the other hybrids on the market or in this Rogue hybrid. This has a very linear brake pedal feel, feels more like a traditional vehicle. The transition between friction and regenerative braking is almost unnoticeable. Nissan has yet to announce pricing on the 2017 Rogue Hybrid, so our comparisons will have to wait until that pricing figure comes out. However, because the Nissan Rogue is available in lower end trims than we see the RAV4, talking about comparable equipment, and because this is available as a front-wheel drive vehicle, the RAV4 is available only as an all-wheel drive vehicle at this time, I expect the Rogue to be significantly less expensive than the RAV4 Hybrid. Although the Rogue is likely going to be less expensive than the RAV4 Hybrid, the hybrid system itself is one of the smoothest on the markets. This is very similar in terms of overall design to the hybrid system that we see in the Infiniti hybrids, even though this is front-wheel drive by default and the Infinities are rear-wheel drive by default. It all has to do with the way that Infiniti has incorporated the engine, two clutches, and a regular automatic transmission under the hood. This system is not an eCVT like we find in the RAV4. The RAV4 does not have a traditional transmission. It has a single planetary gear set and two electric motors that imitate a transmission, if you will. This has a traditional CVT just like the regular Rogue, only they insert an electric motor and two clutch packs. Because of the way that Nissan has arranged the two clutch packs and the electric motor, this is a much smoother system than we saw, for instance, in the Honda Civic Hybrid, which uses only a single clutch and an electric motor and a traditional CVT. So don't think that this drives like a Honda Civic Hybrid, this is actually a great deal smoother. Overall fuel economy appears to be identical between the RAV4 Hybrid and the Rogue Hybrid with all-wheel drive. Of course, if you get the Rogue with front-wheel drive, you'll get one mile per gallon better fuel economy. Although it may not sound like it, this is actually a real win for the Rogue, because again, this uses a mechanical all-wheel drive system, it uses an actual drive shaft sending power to the rear axle. And again, this is going to feel much more sure-footed, much more stable, and much more capable in adverse weather situations. Neither the Rogue nor the RAV4 are really designed for off-road travel. However, this is definitely going to be the more capable vehicle in snow, in sleet, in ice, in wet weather, etc. Not only does this use a traditional mechanical all-wheel drive system like the regular Rogue, this also maintains the all-wheel drive center coupling lock capability that we find in the regular Rogue. So under speeds of approximately 20 to 25 miles an hour, you can press that button and actually mechanically lock that center coupling, and that helps out in adverse weather situations, especially on ice or on snow. It's going to make the Rogue feel definitely more sure-footed. Expected reliability is obviously a strong selling point for the RAV4 Hybrid, but I don't expect the hybrid system in this Rogue to be that far off the regular Rogue in terms of reliability. The reason for that is the transmission is essentially the same, the all-wheel drive system is essentially the same, and the hybrid components have been used in other Nissan vehicles in the past. Nissan has produced this two-clutch, one-motor hybrid system in various forms for several years. And again, we see the same basic system design in a variety of Infiniti products. Although it has yet to be released, the only other competitor with the Rogue would be the upcoming hybrid from Kia. Now, Kia is calling their new hybrid a crossover, but it really is more of a hybrid front-wheel drive hatchback. You cannot get all-wheel drive at all like you can in the RAV4 or this Rogue right here, so it's going to be a very different kind of vehicle if you're looking for a crossover for inclement weather and that all-wheel drive application. If, however, you're simply looking at a front-wheel drive crossover because of the practical utility of the space inside, then the Kia may be a valid comparison. We don't really know what fuel economy is going to be like, but we do expect that Kia to be a little bit higher than this Rogue. It's probably going to be in the mid-40s. Until we can get our hands on one for a complete week, if you're looking for a compact hybrid crossover, definitely put the Nissan Rogue on your shopping list, especially if you're looking for one that's still capable in inclement weather. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Be sure and comment down below this video. Let me know what you think about the 2017 Rogue and the 2017 Rogue Hybrid. Be sure and hit that subscribe button so you can be updated on all of our latest videos, including the full review on this vehicle when we get our hands on it for a complete week. In the meantime, check out those related videos on the side of your screen. Find me over at facebook.com, and I'll see you next week.